Hey, this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, on Hollow Earth Radio, podcast number 29. I'm not really sure how many people listen, but if you're listening, thank you very much. And if nobody is listening, that's okay, Shannon, because I'm here for you. But this is a public website, so hopefully somebody's listening. I want to publicly apologize for upsetting people of color on a thread on Facebook on a certain uh, female person of color feminist website, a very talented, intelligent artist who I respect and admire in most ways. And there's certain things that I disagree with about how this person um, does certain things and says certain things, but I don't want to say anything that would upset anyone. So I want to say that I'm very sorry that I came across as a white, self-centered person of uh, white privilege who is is uh, wanting to assert their own point of view about what I think about racism, feminism, sexism, classism. To me, all of those things are connected. But I understand that this, this thread on Facebook was specifically about um, self-care and people of color and how this culture is not really geared towards that. And it's more geared towards, you know, assuming that white people are the main people. And I'm very, very sorry that I seem to have gone off topic. My mind is very creative and one thing leads to another. And I was trying to make the point of, I feel as a introverted, left-handed, only child, sensitive, artistic person raised by non-traditional parents who divorced when I was four. I have synesthesia. I was bullied and made fun of and picked on a lot in school and I felt very ashamed and I had very low self-esteem and not very many friends. And I realized that that is way, way, way much tamer than somebody who is a person of color who is uh, killed or attacked or beat up or worse or fired from their job just because of, you know, a prejudice or racism type situation. I'm very sorry that I seem to have um, disregarded the serious importance of that topic. I wasn't meaning to do that. My intention was to simply share my own feeling of knowing what it's like to some extent to be ostracized and to be treated as inferior and to have other people dominate me and harm me and bully me. And that's a part that I can empathize with. I am not a person of color. I'm a Caucasian person in the United States. And so I only know what it's like to be me. And I'm very sorry. I don't know what it's like to be a person of color in the USA. And I'm very, very sorry that my words upset people. And I lost my temper. And then I said I was sorry. And then I think I lost my temper again. And then I just basically um, removed myself and blocked the person from communicating with me. And so I'm very sorry that I upset a lot of people. If anybody listening knows what I'm talking about, I am very sorry. Uh, I do feel like some people said things to me like, why is she even allowed to be here? That really kind of hurt my feelings. But I understand that my words upset people. And that's why they said that they wanted to just shut me down and shut me up and get me out of there. And I understand that I upset people with my unusual eccentric way of expressing myself which which I meant to just draw attention to the fact that I feel like a minority in some ways but not because of the color of my skin I suppose because I haven't had that experience because I'm not a person of color in this country and to be honest with you I actually recorded a full podcast that's about this topic And I said some very brave things, I think, that might upset some people. So I decided I'm not going to air that on this Hollow Earth Radio broadcast. Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring, podcast number 29. I decided to upload that to my other websites. If you want to hear me talk about the controversial situation that I found myself in a few days ago on Facebook... 
you can listen to that if you just go to shannonkringen.com or you go to my YouTube or my Mixcloud. Um, I guess it's just going to be on Mixcloud and YouTube because Bandcamp doesn't seem to be working anymore when I upload things. Maybe it'll be on my Patreon as well. That's all free to listen to. I guess I'll just call it something Shannon Kringen talks about racism, sexism, classism, and she is sorry for upsetting people of color with her statements recently. So I will say that I am very sorry that I upset some people. I'm also very sorry that they didn't understand the point that I was trying to make, and I wasn't trying to minimize their point, and I'm very sorry, and I feel really sick to my stomach about it because I try to be a nice person and a kind person and have empathy for other people, even people that I disagree with or, or don't understand. And I will also say, I guess when I see something that seems like hypocrisy, I get upset, but maybe sometimes I misinterpret what the real hypocrisy really is. Like sometimes when I talk about how I feel sad for Palestinians who don't have food and medicine and electricity and water, I get accused of being anti-Semitic. And I find that very sad because that's sometimes people think that if you, if you want Palestinians to receive humanitarian aid, that that means that you're okay with Israeli people having violence inflicted upon them, but I'm not. I am not okay with violence being inflicted upon Palestinian people or Israeli people. They are all human beings. And so also when, when um, a Caucasian person such as myself talks about, I don't even use the word colorblind, but when we talk about how personally we don't feel like we're behaving in a racist manner and we try to treat everyone as our equal and not stereotype people, um, that gets interpreted as denying and minimizing how, how much of a problem racism is in our society. And I think that the intention of saying that from, well, okay, I can only speak for myself. I don't speak for anyone other than me. And so Shannon Kringen feels from a perspective of feeling like to me everyone is a unique human and they happen to come from different cultures and look certain ways I wish that humanity would drop all of the prejudice whether it's racism sexism classism I wish that people would look in the mirror when they're treating somebody in a violent way or an abusive way racist, sexist, classist, all of the different kinds of prejudices that there are if somebody is homophobic or afraid of somebody that's just different. I mean, really, what is it? It's, it's fear. It's fear. I mean, fear causes people to harm each other. You know, I don't want to talk about a lot of violent things right now, but when there's a violent situation in the world I involving a weapon, it's usually because somebody loses their temper or maybe is mentally ill and just doesn't know what they're doing. But I feel like what really causes people to do violent things to each other underneath, maybe it appears that they think they're superior to the other person, but I think underneath that is really fear. And so if people would look in the mirror and realize that they're coming from a place of fear, they think that they have to hurt that person or dominate that person before that person dominates and harms them, in retaliation or preemptively. I mean, that's what war is based upon. When one country attacks another, whoever does it first is doing it out of fear because they think they better show them who's boss and they better attack the other country before the other country attacks them first. And that's really sad. So that's why I think people, well, I could only speak for myself. So that's why I say that is that to me, it's really because when I do something, I like to think that when I make a mistake and I do something that harms another person, I like to think that I'm conscious enough to then realize, oh, I made a mistake. And then I try to correct that mistake. Although a few days ago online, I guess I didn't do that. I just said, okay, sorry, goodbye. I'm out of here. 
And so I basically, I guess I didn't really fix the problem. And I'm sorry, I got so, so, so upset. And I'm very sorry about upsetting other people. And I'm sorry that I wasn't able to speak in a way that would help cause them to feel any kind of empathy for me because they just thought I was being a selfish uh, jerk. And they, I don't think that they saw me as a person that has a heart and a soul that actually cares about other people. And I think they also don't realize that I struggle with self-hatred and I struggle with uh, um, feeling not a lot of love for myself at times. So again, I'm very sorry for hurting people's feelings online. And I think I will err uh, what I said about racism and people of color and my um, dramatic conversation that I got involved with online that I am sorry that I didn't just stay calm and say, I'm very sorry. I think you're missing my point. I don't mean to dismiss what you guys are talking about. I'm so sorry. And then if they had continued to be mean to me after I said I was sorry in a kind way, then it would have been best for me to just extract myself from the conversation and just leave. Because I have to say that I do think sometimes when I, when I share a point of view that's kind of eccentric, I get people attacking me. That's just kind of how it feels. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's how it feels to me. It's happened before with, with other topics. Like sometimes I've talked to uh, women who are feminists and then I try to point out a situation where I saw a female abuse a man and that that I don't like it when somebody who thinks they're a feminist is abusive to a man and thinks that that's self-righteous. And I don't mean abusive to a man who's who's being abusive. I mean abusive in a way that is unjustified. And then thinking that that's okay, that that's kind of uh, evening the score and the pendulum is going to swing so that women are going to take over the world because in my own personal opinion is that the world would be more balanced and healthy if we had male and female equal power and not women taking over and being like the new version of men because d basically I guess men still dominate this planet and if women dominated the planet instead of men some people say that would be better but I have a feeling that the best thing is to have both male and female energy and power in the world in a more equal way because I think male and female energy is very different but it's beautiful and sacred and there is also a dark side to too much femininity versus too much masculinity you know masculine is very strong and and more aggressive and female energy is more receptive and more gentle and more I don't know the feel the, the male and female anatomy is very different the male and female energy is very different so I hope it's okay for me to air this on hollow earth radio Shannon Kringen goddess Kring I have some kind of strong opinions about these different topics and I'm really sorry that if what I say upsets you I can only speak from my own perspective and I realize that other people very different from me see this in a very different way I do wish that more human beings would look in the mirror and realize what their actions, the, you know, the effect, because we all, we really are all connected on this planet, uh, humans. I would also extend that to the plants and the animals. There's a thing I call speciesism, which is when human beings think that they can dominate plants and animals and how that's mostly considered okay you know, the way we slaughter animals, the way we have farms, the way we kill insects, we set mouse traps, we kill spiders. I personally don't kill spiders unless, a, I guess, if a spider was poison in my house and I felt very much in danger. But even then, I try to take spiders and move them outside. You know, I, I once, uh, when I was nine years old, once I killed a black widow spider when I lived in Petaluma, California, and to this day I feel bad about it. I, I killed this this uh, black widow spider, and I killed her eggs. I squished her egg sac, and I feel like, did I really need to do that? 
just because she's a black widow spider doesn't mean that she doesn't have a right to exist. I mean, this was outside in a near a goat barn and it was near a shed. I guess maybe that wasn't the best place though for her babies to hatch, but I just feel sad for the plants and the animals that humans dominate. And so I wish that humanity would realize we are all one. And I know that sounds really corny and some people are, are not gonna, they're just gonna think I'm being, oh, I'm colorblind and everything is fine. But it's true that if more human beings would wake up to what I'm saying, then we would have less violence in the world and less prejudice and less racism, sexism, classism, uh, ageism, whatever all the different kinds of prejudices are. And again, when I say this, I'm not trying to make light of how extreme racism is because I know racism is probably the worst uh, prejudices that we have on this planet between human beings because it causes people to destroy each other literally and that is very frightening to me and very scary and very sad and I just wish that more people were conscious of the reality of what their actions are that's all I'm saying about that. And I know that that's not the solution because it's not like everyone's just going to wake up and act like a good person and treat each other with kindness and respect and treat others how you would like to be treated. In an ideal world, that's how it would be. And so I guess we need people to fight for their rights and to help people that are being harmed by these different prejudices that I'm speaking of. We need more people to stand up and join together and do what's good in the world. I guess there are people out there fighting, fighting for rights and fighting. Like Mother Teresa said, she would never march against war, but she would march for peace. And so she believed in only supporting what she believes in and not fighting against what she doesn't believe in. I guess that's, I mean, I don't know if literally Mother Teresa might have not been a perfect human and she might not have lived 100% by all of her principles. But I basically agree with the concept, me personally, because I think some people are on this planet to fight against what is wrong and try to force it to get better. But I personally think that's not my path because I lose my temper and I, I lose my cool and I don't think I can stay focused in a way that would help the world if I try to fight against things I don't like that I think are, are not just. Because actually when I try that, I, I have what happened online the other day. I thought I was trying to fight against something that I thought was wrong but it got misinterpreted and then people thought I was dismissing them and had no compassion or empathy for them and that I was just being really self-centered in a narcissistic way and that just made everything worse. And so I'm really sorry that I did that. And what I wish I had done was just not join that one conversation because what happened was the person wrote something that I wasn't resonating with and I think I just wasn't resonating with it. And so it's best to just not say anything. If you don't have something constructive to say, probably not say anything at all. For me personally, I'm not speaking for anyone other than myself. So I will say that I am an introverted person who feels compelled to share her thoughts and feelings on a podcast, on a public airwave station, Hollow Earth Radio. Um, thank you so much for allowing me to have freedom of speech. And I hope that everything I say falls in the lines of keeping things positive and life affirming and not hateful. I'm trying to come from a place of love and I'm very sorry that I upset some people. And I'll just, I'll just say that I am a person who is very introspective and trying to learn how to love myself. I don't have very many friends, but that's mostly by choice. I don't know if I want very many friends. I, I'm my, my best friend is my cat and I love plants and animals and birds. And I do have a boyfriend, but I don't live with him. And I have a mom and a dad and a couple other friends and people online that I talk to, but I don't have a lot of close friends. And I am a very troubled human being. I have a lot of emotional problems and I've never had kids or gotten married. I guess I'm just confessing to you. Maybe some of you have already heard this. If anyone's actually listening, thank you so much. 
I welcome all questions and comments. Even if you disagree with what I'm saying, if you have something constructive to say, con you know, criti constructive criticism is fine with me. Um, of course, I prefer it if you have something positive to say, but if constructive criticism is what you need to say to me, then that's fine too. So I will just say that every single person has a unique perspective and I know that we do fit into groups. I mean, if I had to join a group, I guess I would join a group for loners. I would join a group for misfits. I guess the if I had to join a group, it wouldn't be based on my skin color. It would not be based upon my religion because I'm not religious, but I'm also not an atheist. I'm kind of a very spiritual person. Um, I do belong to a creative writing group. And I feel very comfortable in that group because I feel like there's usually only about three of us that show up and we, we do free writes and we sit and write for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and then we read out loud in a circle to each other what we wrote and we share and we don't critique each other. We just share for the support of sharing and we might point out, you know, something we liked about it or what was funny or what we identify with or something, but we don't really criticize. And what I like about the group is that each person in the group has a very different way of writing. And like I tend to write rhymy poems and like just journal entries and autobiographical type stuff. And then one of the other people in the group writes short flash fiction, a lot of dialogue type stories about these different characters that she invents. And then this other person tends to have very unique, colorful, dreamlike language. And he shares from a very different perspective, like a more magical, surrealistic, poetic, I'm, I'm not sure how to describe it. But let's just say that all three of us have very different writing styles, although we do influence each other. And sometimes there's interesting synchronicity with what we write. And I find that kind of magical. So I will say that... I once again am feeling kind of raw and very sorry about the drama that I was in a few days ago online and I'm very sorry that my words upset some people and I feel misunderstood but I understand that it really shouldn't have been about me anyway but it's really hard when when you say something and then someone accuses you of being totally self-centered it's so hard to just say, oh, you're right, I'm being too self-centered. And then just, that's what I should have done, is like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm getting carried away. Okay, I'm too self-centered. I just want to listen to other people now. That would have been a more mature way for me to handle it. And instead, I, I got really defensive. And I know that the more defensive I get, the worse it gets, because then the more self-centered I come across as. So I'm sorry. And I do see what I did now. And to, to, to be honest with you, I was so upset that I had a hard time concentrating and reading what other people said to me. So it, I only saw like the negative parts, like them accusing me of, of being a bad person, basically of being selfish and, you know, not caring about them. And it really, really upset me when I read that because I like to think that I'm a much nicer person than that. But maybe I'm not. Maybe my dark side is that I'm not a very nice person and that I am self-centered and that's kind of why I like to spend a lot of time to myself is that I, I don't feel as guilty when I'm by myself I can just be you know like I like to rent a lot of BBC videos from the library I rent BBC um, TV shows comedies dramas movies, full-length feature movies, you know, Monty Python, the um, Doctor Who, and various different things, and just crime shows and dramas, and I forgot all the names of them. I just get random ones, and I listen to those, and I have a friend that lives in England that I visit. Well, I visited him once, and we, we met each other once in Edinburgh, Scotland, and had fun, and today I volunteered in nature with plants and animals and I enjoyed that and I guess I just share in that way and I understand why I don't have very many friends I don't really try to make friends and I'm not really sure I don't know how to fully be myself with other people I am working with a psychiatrist and a psychologist and a naturopath and I'm really happy that I have my health care that covers that for now 
And hopefully if they take our health care away, they will warn us and we will have, I will have advance warnings so that I can taper off on all of the health care services that I'm receiving with my affordable health care. So thank you for listening. My name is Shannon Kring and Goddess Kring. And if anybody listening to this was or has ever been, um, if I've ever hurt your feelings by things that I've said online, I'm very sorry. It was not my intention. And I do come from a different point of view as other people. I was raised by kind of unusual parents who are non-traditional and they taught me different things. And about feminism, I was raised in a family where my grandmother was kind of domineering. I love my grandma, rest in peace, grandma. She was, the good things about her was she was left-handed. I'm left-handed too. So I, I kind of liked that she was left-handed when I was a little kid because everyone else was right-handed. And so my grandma and I were left-handed. We were the lefties. And so that kind of made my self-esteem better, knowing that it was okay to be left-handed, even though it was different than other people. So my grandma was really into animals. She had dogs and cats and horses and chickens and geese. And briefly, my mom and I had a goat. And so my childhood was partly full of animals. And I really loved that. My grandmother was very good with animals and plants. She was also good with plants and she was an amazing cook. But the dark side of my grandma was that she was kind of bossy, kind of pushy, kind of domineering. And she had a real kind of criticalness about her. And she kind of criticized me and my mom a lot. And she kind of was self, uh, self-centered self in a certain way so that she kind of thought most people should agree and see things her way. And I don't think she realized that that was kind of dismissive to other people. And it could be that I'm like my grandmother in that way. I try not to be, but maybe I am. So my grandmother was kind of domineering. And so as a little girl, I thought of women, instead of a positive feminist perspective of thinking that women are great, women are just as good as men, I was kind of afraid of my grandmother a little bit. Like she wouldn't yell at me or hit me or anything horrible like that. But she had a way of verbally criticizing in a way that made me feel like it wasn't okay for me to ask for help and that I should know how to do things on my own and that I wasn't supposed to make a mistake. And so I grew up feeling intimidated by my grandmother and like if I wanted to be free and do what I wanted to do, I had to go off by myself and sneak. And then if I made a mistake around my grandmother, I felt like I had to hide it and pretend like I didn't do that. And sometimes I would ask my grandma for help. And instead of being patient and helping me, she'd be like, oh, let me do it. I'll just do it for you. And then she would just take over and do it for me. And I remember feeling embarrassed and humiliated and ashamed that I asked for help because she would just take over. And then it made me feel like, how am I going to learn, you know, if you just take over? And I felt like I wasn't supposed to ask for help. So I'm just telling you this because this is partly where I come from. And then my dad wrote comedy and music, but he confided in me about his love life and various things as a little girl about some of his issues with women. And so I remember feeling like weirded out by, oh gosh, you know, women are scary. Oh, I don't want to be one of these women that's mean to men because he felt rejected by women. And so both my mom and dad were raised by mothers who weren't super affectionate and weren't super nurturing. And they both kind of didn't really trust their mothers for different reasons. And so I think that my perspective uh, on women was that I was kind of afraid to trust women and afraid of women. And my mom is sort of like my older sister, I guess. And we sort of raised ourselves and we had no parents. That's kind of how it felt psychologically. So I feel like I have a a particular fear of women and a, a bit of a trauma about that. And so I get intimidated in a certain way and then I feel like I need to defend and assert myself. And so I guess that comes off as really self-centered. And also my dad in some ways is, is more sensitive. Like the, 
and my step grandpa, my real grandpas both passed away and I never met them. But my my uh, step grandpa was very kind and funny. And he was kind of more feminine than my grandmother. My grandma was kind of the tough one, the kind of bossy one. And she also didn't like emotions. She didn't like it if somebody got too angry, or if somebody was really sad, it made her uncomfortable. And she didn't want them to, you know, don't cry. You know, she didn't want people to be sad. She didn't want people to be angry. I almost think if somebody was too happy, she would have a way of kind of calming them down out of that as well. So any strong emotions, even positive ones, I don't think my grandma was real comfortable with emotions of all kinds. So maybe that kind of dampened my spirit as a child. I also remember sitting at the dinner table, though, and my grandmother tickling my back and how much I liked sitting on her lap, and she was gentle with me physically. But verbally, she said and did things that was a little bit pushy and domineering and made me feel like I had to go hide and sneak off by myself to have freedom. So I'm just saying this to explain my perspective of where I'm coming from. So I guess this is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring's podcast of introspective narratives, introspective narratives. And I realize that all people are unique. And so basically, I'm just saying that the men in my family, in some ways, were more feminine, like what I mean by that is sensitive and kind and gentle, and a little bit more okay with emotions. Ironically, my step grandpa and my dad, my mom is a little bit of both. My mom is a little bit like my grandma, maybe in some ways, but she's also, my mom is very intelligent and sensitive and loves animals and plants. And she's very private. So I don't want to say much else about my mom. So let me just say that I have a lot to learn in interpersonal relationships. I am in therapy for borderline personality disorder, which I don't really believe in that anybody fits perfectly into a label. But borderline personality disorder is supposedly about feeling a fragile sense of self. My poem, Fragile Sense of Self, Intangible Desire for Wealth. It's kind of like, I feel like I don't really exist and I'm supposed to just be a chameleon and adapt to people around me. But then in other ways, I have strong opinions. So basically... I have a hard time validating myself and I think I go around looking for other people to validate me. Maybe that's it. Maybe that's why I I got myself in trouble online because I was coming from a needy place and maybe my fantasy was that these people of color would validate like, oh, like my fantasy, this would, this would have been my fantasy. If I had said the the point that I made, like, oh, I feel like a minority too, in terms of, and then, you know, I have, I'm left-handed, only child, synesthesia, was picked on as a kid because I'm different and eccentric. I wasn't trying to minimize their points about uh, racism. But I wish that, you know, my fantasy would be like, oh, that's a unique, interesting point of view. Now let's keep this topic on racism or let's keep this topic on self-care for people of color. Let's keep this topic, you know, come on, Shannon, stay on topic. But just acknowledge my point of view, like to validate, like, oh, that's an interesting point. We hadn't thought about that before. Yes, there's prejudice in all different ways. That's what I wish. You know, kind of like when you're in act when you're in acting class, they have a, a an exercise called yes and. I think it's is that what it's called? Yes and. It's when you're doing improv theater because I've taken a bunch of acting classes at Freehold Theater here in Seattle and I love doing that. I kind of miss that. Um, you you come up you just say anything. You say we're driving in a car and then we see on the side of the road And then somebody else goes, yes, and, and then they go, we saw a tarantula on the side of the road. Yes, and then there was a thunderstorm, you know, like people, no matter what, you come up with just these, these totally random ideas, and you'd create your own story. But everyone is supposed to say yes, and even if you don't like what's if you thought what someone said is silly, and you don't even like what they said, you still you don't go no, you just go yes, and and then you contribute your creativity, and then you take it to a different direction, you build on what they say, if you like what they said, or you can take it in a different direction if you want to change the scene. So I guess that would have been my fantasy was to build a bridge. You know, when people are talking about prejudice and um, people of color um, not being supported by our society in terms of doing self-care, I wish that they had said, when I, when I tried to bring up my point of view, I wish they had said, 
oh, that's interesting. Yes, and, and then just take it back to the other topic. But I probably said or did things that helped that not happen. So I do take responsibility for my piece of that. And what I also just said, again, I'm very sorry that I upset some people. I am very sorry about that. I I acknowledge uh, my role in upsetting some people, and I'm sorry. If anybody listening knows anybody that's involved in that, tell them I'm very sorry. I don't know what else I can say. I wish I could erase everything I said that was upsetting to people or apologize in a way that actually helps them to feel better and, you know, soothed from the pain. I'm very sorry. Uh, I'm also sorry that I feel pain from the whole experience. I actually, yeah, the drama that, that create that was created partly by me, I'm very sorry. I will talk about Joseph Campbell now. You know, Joseph Campbell is the guy who Bill Moyers interviewed a bunch of times about follow your bliss. And let me just do station identification. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, on Hollow Earth Radio in Seattle. Thanks for tuning in. Podcast number 29. Joseph Campbell, um, he's the guy who coined Follow Your Bliss. And he was talking about if you do what you love, the universe tends to support you in that. I mean, to some extent, not to be overly simplistic. This is not a cartoon reality. This is complicated reality with paradox. Paradox on the rocks. So I will say that Joseph Campbell actually got in trouble because he said something that was interpreted as a negative thing. He talked about uh, a lot of people, when they're philosophers, they compare and contrast religion and different cultures, and they usually emphasize what is different about all the cultures and what makes them unique and special and different from each other. And you can learn from the contrast of different cultures and different religions. But what Joseph Campbell wanted to do was think about the similarities. And so he studied different religions and cultures and the power of myth and the story of myth and the symbolism of the archetypes. And he, he simplified it down to what was similar and what were common repetitive themes. You know, I like to say infinite intricate patterns in nature. So Joseph Campbell talked about how similar different cultures and religions were, even though people thought they were so different, he saw the commonality and he saw what connected them all. And instead of people going, oh, wow, Joseph Campbell, that's a unique idea. We like that. You know, we can, we can use this to heal some of humanity's, you know, uh, wounds and, and help uh, love and appreciate different cultures and have maybe less war in the world. But instead, I think some people see him as that. I mean, I do. I, I see him as uh, a trailblazer and somebody who, you know, broke out of tradition and decided to look at things from a higher perspective and compare and contrast religions in a way that saw what was, what was similar about them all. Just like people who believe in science and they believe in God, you know, that's how I am. I believe that nature is God and God is nature and science is God and God is science and it's all just true. And that's the only kind of spiritual stuff I believe in is the more science type, science of mind type philosophy. Some people don't understand that. They think you have to choose between spirituality and creationism or evolution and be an atheist. And I don't really agree with either one of those extremes. So I believe in the commonality between science and spirituality or spiritual wisdom, but I guess I'm not religious at all. So you, you could say I don't believe in God like man in the sky who judges or any religious God. I just believe in the creative energy of the universe. So I will say that Joseph Campbell, I think what he said was considered controversial because some people were offended by what he said about different cultures and religions having common themes and actually being very similar deep down with the wisdom of what they were saying. Deep, the deep down wisdom was very similar. And people, I think, were offended because they thought he was disregarding the unique diversity and the cultural distinction between different cultures and religions. And so I think that it's a little bit sad that some people didn't um, see the positiveness of what he was trying to do. I think he was trying to build bridges between cultures and religions and try to see the connections and the unity of humanity and civilization and how we've evolved and how we have 
definitely there's unity in diversity. Definitely there's different uh, races and cultures and religions and traditions and different kinds of people in the world. And we could see what's common about ourselves. A lot of prejudice in the world, I think, is caused by fear. And if people would look in the mirror and realize what they're afraid of, if they weren't afraid and they loved themselves, maybe they could love each other more and they could realize that. So I just have a sort of philosophy in life, but I realize that the reality of history and the real world is that people have harmed each other. People harm animals, people harm plants, people harm each other for different reasons, for different prejudice reasons. And they're, But really, I think the common denominator in people that harm whether it's plants, animals, or fellow human beings, is basically fear, fear of something that you think is different than you. So if you fear that I am this and they are that, us versus them, then there's all kinds of reasons why you think you're justified in being afraid of somebody else. The same thing with um, killing a spider. Like if humans are terrified of spiders, then we think we need to kill spiders. And I feel very sad about that. I tend to save spiders. If I see a spider in my apartment, actually, I just let it be. If it's a really big spider that looks a little bit like it could be poisonous, I have a tendency to just put it outside. Although I've been told that it just comes back in because it's too cold in Seattle for spiders to live outside. They'd rather live in your nice warm apartment. But I tend to not kill spiders at all. But then again, I do kill fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, bed bugs, things like that I don't really want to live with. Uh, So, and I do eat meat from time to time. If I had to hunt my own meat, I probably would be a vegetarian. So I'm definitely not a perfect human being, but in a perfect world, I would probably be a vegan (laughs) or I would hunt my own meat because I think that would be more fair. And I feed my cat raw frozen meat diet. So thank you for listening. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Hollow Earth Radio, number 29. And again, I I did a more um, controversial monologue about some of the drama that I was in online, which I think I'm going to air. I don't know if I will or not, but I'm going to maybe put it on my YouTube, Patreon, and Mixcloud But it's a little bit controversial and I say things that might upset some people. I didn't say angry things, but I just talked about the drama that I was involved in online recently about from my perspective. Uh, And I'm really sorry again that I upset some people with what I what my words and I'm trying to keep this really positive and respectful on Hello Earth Radio. This is a very positive life affirming channel. And compassion and empathy and forgiveness and love and acknowledging the reality of the world we live in and there's a lot of injustice in the world and I'm very sad about that. I'm especially troubled about the idea that healthcare is part of capitalism. I really want to keep healthcare uh I want to expand healthcare from the Obamacare ACA that we have now to single payer nonprofit cover everyone, eliminate all the price gouging, uh, which is artificially elevated prices that we have here in the United States that are a lot lower in other countries, especially in European countries, where I have a friend in England and Norway and Scotland and their healthcare system is a lot more civilized and it's nonprofit and it costs less than what we already have. And I really think that healthcare and medical treatment should not have anything to do with how sick or healthy you are, how young or old and how rich or poor you are. I feel like um, healthcare, like public transportation, public education and public healthcare is an infrastructure that I think that a, a civilized, healthy society would put money into well-funding healthcare, transportation, you know, public roads, public education, public school, all the way to the college level, public health care, the public library, the fire department, the police department, all of the things that we all share and use together and how that is something that 
could be publicly funded through our taxes. And then on top of that, so that would be democratic socialism. Dem to me, democratic socialism is a way of, of helping capitalism be more ethical and more fair so that wages are raised for the low income and wages are lowered a little bit for the upper income and that corporations pay their fair share of taxes as well as wealthy citizens. And then low income and poor people, you know, ideally rent should only be about a third of your income. So about a third of your income would be the rent. So that would be my idea of democratic socialism. And then capitalism would be the cherry on top. You know, if you want to be an entrepreneur and have your own business and make money, hey, that's great. But every single citizen of the United States would be guaranteed health care, public transportation, perhaps public housing that would only be a third of their income for rent. I don't know how that would be implemented, but that's what I think everyone deserves. So if someone is extremely wealthy, then they can pay a lot for rent or buy their own home or whatever. And if someone is middle class or low income, a third of their income goes to rent so that they can afford to buy food and pay their bills and survive and be okay and not live in very stressful poverty. And then on top of that, you can have your own business and make money and be an entrepreneur. And then you have to pay taxes on that. So I feel like in this country, sometimes people are punished actually for being low income. But then things get harder for the low income. Although I have to admit that I have found a way to survive pretty well in this country. I am a low income person with certain emotional challenges and I have affordable rent and I have the health care that I have, which allows me to go see the doctor and the psychologist. And I'm so grateful and the dentist and the eye doctor. And I'm so grateful. And I think everyone deserves the basic human right of taking care of themselves in that way. So thank you for listening. This is Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. And if you want to hear my more controversial um monologue that's about some of the things I went through recently just go to my YouTube channel I don't know what I'm going to call it I will just call it Shannon Kringen's monologue about controversial topics like racism white privilege etc and how I am sorry that I hurt the feelings of some people of color recently very very sorry that I hurt their feelings so I just want to publicly say that I am very sorry that I hurt some people's feelings and upset some people and just stirred up some sadness or anger or fear or whatever dark feelings that people were, were stimulated in because of what I said and how I behaved. I am very sorry and I don't know how I can heal and fix that, but I, at least I'm sorry and at least I acknowledge that. And I was trying to make a certain point, but it just did not get interpreted as that. It got interpreted as me just being very self-centered and again I am sorry that it got interpreted in that way and again my, my sadness is that I wish people would when somebody like me who I consider I consider myself a bit eccentric and I have synesthesia I hear mu I when I when I hear music I see shapes and colors dance in my head and I just have certain uh, I might even be a little bit autistic but nobody's actually diagnosed me as that I'm a little dyslexic. I just, I'm a little bit different and I like to read between the lines and see different things. And I realize that when I say things, people just don't relate to what I'm saying and they just think that I'm off topic and I'm saying a bunch of weird personal stuff. And my fantasy, or I guess my need and my desire would be for somebody to say, wow, Shannon, that's a very unique perspective. I never thought of it that way before. I don't fully understand or agree with you. Um, uh, and I feel like you're off topic a little bit, but thank you for sharing your unique idea and then like maybe encouraging me to join the topic in a, in a better way. I don't know. That's kind of what I wish, but maybe that was not realistic anyway because I was so upset that I wouldn't be able to do that. But my fantasy would be that if I say something that other people think is just really weird and like uh, off topic or self-serving, my my fantasy would be for them to tell me about themselves and say, oh, that's interesting. That's your unique, your own unique perspective. Here's my unique perspective. My experience is, and then tell me something personal about themselves that relates to the topic. 
so that we could build bridges and, and not and not fight with each other or be competitive or criticize, but to have some kind of um, build bridges. Like Joseph Campbell, when he compared different religions and different cultures, he was trying to see the unity in humanity and the theme, the common themes and the wisdom, the beautiful wisdom that's in every culture and every culture is different and every religion is different and different myths exist in different cultures around the world in civilization and mankind is evolving. But it's interesting to, to see that you can build bridges instead of finding excuses about us versus them and they're like this and but we're like this and they're like that. There's ways of building bridges and finding unity in the diversity. And so I guess what I'm talking about now, I guess, is philosophy about how I wish the world could be more like or that I appreciate Joseph Campbell for his unique work that he did. And I'm sure there's lots of other people that did interesting things like trailblazer type things. The artist Laurie Anderson is somebody who I admire because she kind of breaks a lot of rules and just kind of does multimedia. There are a lot of people who said Laurie Anderson that she could, um, she had to pick between music or visual art. She had to pick if she was a performance artist or a visual artist or a musician or a poet or a storyteller. And she just never wanted to label herself as whatever kind of artist. She just wanted to be an artist working with different media, whether it was visual or sound or video or live theater or music, or singing, or dancing, or acting. I mean, all those different things are connected. And I, I feel similar, and some people would prefer if she was more traditional and had a focus in a certain traditional kind of way. And another person I really admire is Temple Grandin for talking about what it's like to be autistic. And she's also an expert in animal behavior, and she has a master's, I think, or a doctorate in animal behavior sci behavioral science. I'm actually going to go see her live on Vashon Island with my dad uh, in the next few months. So I just admire Joseph Campbell and Temple Grandin, and I admire people who are trailblazers. Uh, I actually admire the woman that I got in trouble with online. Um, I'm the one who kind of lost my patience and decided to leave the situation. I could have said I was very sorry and repaired that and I didn't and I'm sorry about that. So I will say that I admire that person. She is a she is a trailblazer. I don't agree with everything that she says and how she does everything. I find it um, upsetting in some ways, but that's really not for me to say that's never mind. So I'm not a perfect human being and I'm very sorry that I upset some people with some of my language recently. So I hope that we can build bridges with each other and get beyond the us versus them and the fighting. You know, ha learn to have compassion and empathy. And again, when I say all of this, I also need to follow my own advice. I'm not saying that I do all this great stuff that I'm talking about. I like to think at my best, I'm a trailblazer or I am a person who has the courage to speak my unique mind and let other people judge it or appreciate it or laugh at it or <laughs> whatever they want to do with it. So I am just one person speaking from my perspective. And I do know that I suffer from self-esteem that goes up and down. I seem to be confident with my artwork. But then again, I don't even try to do my artwork in a professional way in terms of showing it or selling it. I just prefer to have my stuff be Creative Commons and I share it online for free. I just freely share my work because I can make a living as an art model and a medical model and I've delivered groceries off and on here and there which is kind of difficult but I kind of like doing that because I get to kind of work on my own and run around and just deliver groceries to people that's kind of like a, a random job that I can do in between modeling jobs if I need to have more work although generally I'm busy enough with modeling for art classes and medical schools so thank you so much for listening. This is Shannon Kringen, Goddess Kring, Hollow Earth Radio, podcast number 29. 
I hope that you got something out of this and you found it inspiring in some way. I will say that if you want to do your own podcast, all you really need is to get the free software that's called Audacity and put it on your computer and get yourself a microphone. And for free, you can upload to Mixcloud and have your podcast every week and just record however many minutes you want to record. I think they have a rule though on Mixcloud that it has to be at least 10 minutes or at least however many minutes. I don't know what the length is, but there's different websites too. Like I have a YouTube channel where I share these podcasts every week and then I put a visual, like a slideshow of my artwork and my photography to visually entertain people and then they can listen to the podcast. On Mixcloud, it's just audio. And then I have a band camp which is just audio. And I also have a Patreon, which I share audio, these podcasts on, which is all free. I offer this all free. I have photos on my Flickr that are all free under Creative Commons. And so I kind of like the whole free culture thing. And again, I wish we had single payer public health care. And I feel like I need to say it again. I'm sorry. I'm very OCD. I am so sorry that I upset some people and hurt some people's feelings. And I came off as very self-centered, like I didn't care about other people's point of view. And I just got really defensive. And I'm really sorry about that. I, I will speak up for myself, though, and say I think I did have a valid point to make. But I think it was not appreciated. And it was misunderstood. And it was totally unappreciated. And then I freaked out, which really made my point get buried in the drama of my my upsetness. And then everyone else got upset with me and then I got more upset. And so the whole thing turned into something not very positive. And I'm very sorry about that. I just don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like I feel like I had a unique point of view to make. but And I felt sad that it wasn't appreciated. And I'm very sorry that I upset people. So I'm see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to, I don't want to totally put myself down and say that I'm a terrible person. I just want to say that I did have a point that I was trying to make, but it got misinterpreted and unappreciated and I feel sad about it. But then at the same time, I can see why I offended people because it, I came off as somebody who was just too self-involved and wasn't listening to other people enough. And I totally understand that. And I'm very sorry about that. So I guess I, maybe it was just not the right place to share my unique point of view and that I probably need to just share it elsewhere, like right here on this podcast, Goddess Kring, Shannon Kring and Podcast. Thank you so much for the free speech. And I hope that this was inspiring and helpful to other people. And even if not, I feel good that I expressed myself and know that I have value just as myself. So I'm sending peace and love to you and I, whoever's listening. If anybody's listening, thank you so much for listening. And if nobody is listening, Shannon, you're here for you. And please, please, please stay on this earth as long as you can and live out your natural life. Every single human being is unique. And yet I know that the world works in a certain way and that our culture has certain structures that need to be changed so that we can have more justice in the world and more equality and more fairness. And there is a lot of progress that we can make in that area. So part of me is a philosopher and wants to talk about how I wish things could be and how I see things personally from my point of view. And then I also know that the, the history of mankind is a certain way and that there are patterns that we are caught up in as humans in terms of being competitive and harming one another and having different cultures and the whole us versus them. I realize that that is how our world works to some extent and there's a lot of injustice in the world and I'm very upset about that. But I guess what really makes me tick is the freedom and the ability to just share my philosophy on how I think it could be and how I wish it could be in terms of there could be solar panels everywhere. Bernie Sanders could be our president. I think, you know, because he's not a corrupt politician as far as I can tell, and he hasn't been seduced by all of the money in politics, and he would fight for single payer health care for all of us and solar panels and less pollution and help for uh, minority people, people of color, transgender handicapped people, elderly people, little children, uh, people that are less fortunate than the 
the upper uh, upper class wealthy people that have a lot more power than the other people. That's how I wish things could be. So thank you so much for listening and freedom and embracing grace, moonshone face. So thank you for listening to Goddess Kring, Shannon Kringen. I'll see you next week. Here's a little bit of music or poetry or something at the end and all that jazz. Follow your heart, follow your soul, follow your bliss. And again, forgive me if I've ever hurt your feelings. Please try to forgive me. I'm trying to be a better person. Thank you. Actually, I think I'm not actually going to air. I just thought about it again. I'm not going to air the controversial monologue that I did because I was too upset. And I feel like my words would just be upsetting to too many people. Maybe I'll just talk about this later in a, in a different way. Unity in diversity. Unity in diversity. In diversity. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring Radio. Shannon Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring. Goddess Kring.